<laughs> so this bike is absolutely ludicrous. And believe it or not, anybody can build this 6,000 watt, 72 volt electric motorcycle at home for less than $2,500. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. And honestly, nothing more needs to be said. Cue the intro. Oh God, it's coming. Where's it coming from? Oh gosh. Oh, there it comes. This is my new Win1 E2 e-bike, and it's a super cool bike, but if I had one complaint about it, right out of the box, it just doesn't really come with very much power. Meaning that although it has this off-road style frame, you can't really use it for much off-roading. This is a 72 volt 3000 watt motor, which when I pair this with a 72 volt 80 amp controller and a 72 volt battery, I can give this bike a power of 6000 watts. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, make sure to go ahead, hit that like button, Leave a nice comment down below, and most importantly, subscribe. I'm trying to reach my goal of 1 million subscribers, and guys, we are so close. So make sure to go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and let's get right into it. So the very first step of this build process was replacing our rear wheel with our 72 volt 3000 watt motor. I did this by first unplugging our boring stock rear motor, and then taking off the rear wheel. And after simply unscrewing the nuts which held in our original motor, we were ready to upgrade. This was actually super easy for me because the diameter of the slots for the rear axle to go in matched up perfectly with the motor that I already had, so it just slid in like this. The only issue we had with this was that there was a lot of space left in between the axle and the motor, so we had to fill this up with about an inch of spacers. Alright again, so hardly perfect, but as you can see I got a whole bunch of spacers down from, I think it was Miner's Hardware, and uh, these should work alright for this. Again, I don't know how well this is going to hold up as a permanent solution, uh, but we're certainly going to give it a try. After putting on our new and improved rear wheel, I decided to take off the seat to expose our controller housing. Alright, so we cracked open that seat, and you can just see how small this controller is relative to the space that they give you to put a controller in, which is why I have this. I'm just going to replace that thing. So we're going to first take this thing out, then we're going to replace it with this bad boy. Removing this controller was easy, as all we really had to do was unplug it. Boom, got that bad boy out. While trying to fit in our new controller, I realized that there were some bolts that were getting in the way, so we had to cut those out. That thing is gone. The new controller fit in there so snug that I didn't really need to do any serious mounting, so I just used some duct tape to keep it down. Look at the sheer size difference between this new controller I've put in and the old controller. This is what's going to make this bike so crazy. After mounting our new controller to our bike with a little bit of duct tape and a little bit of love, I decided to route our motor cable up through the frame in the most efficient way I could find. Once I had it thoroughly mounted with some zip ties, I decided to hook our motor wires up to the controller using this little yellow wire board. Getting this done is super easy and all you're really doing is hooking up the yellow, blue, and green wires coming out of the motor to the yellow, green, and blue wires coming out of the controller. Oh yeah. We got that thing looking like that right now. And uh, yeah. After getting bored of that, I decided to put my battery in. Again, this was pretty experimental, so I wasn't 100% sure how I was gonna get that battery in, but I bought this little mini ratchet strap, which I used to strap this battery down. And believe it or not, this is so much more solid than it looks, this battery would not move no matter what. But as you can see, the results were excellent. Now, I don't know if they're giving out Nobel prizes for engineering, but I think I plead my case. After that, I took the LCD screen and throttle which came with my controller and I mounted those to the handlebars. For any of you who don't know, if you have accessories that come with your controller such as an LCD screen or throttle like I just mentioned, they'll plug into these wires right here with no issues. After connecting the throttle and LCD screen up to our controller, as well as our battery, we were finally at the point where our electronics would turn on. But wait a minute, because we're not done here. As you can see, there's a lot of leftover wires here. These are mostly things coming out of the controller which are supposed to connect up to components like alarms and maybe reverse or whatever, but really we're just connecting this controller up to the throttle and the LCD screen to get this bike at least functional. So we don't need these for this specific build, so I go ahead and tuck those away. And after cleaning up our wires, we can finally add our seat on top of it. Thank you. 
And I can't believe I almost forgot to mount our rear brake because I'm not going to get on this bike until we have some sufficient stopping power. I had to use a bunch of spacers in order to do this because the rotor was so far away from the actual point in the frame where we mount the brake, but it ended up being pretty solid in the end. All right, all right, all right. We got this thing pretty much finished. As you can see, it is on and ready to go. I just wanna give you a little tour of this bike. As you can see, we do have a few extra wires hanging out. Um, this is because I'm not sure if this is going to be a permanent solution for how I want this bike to be. I may wanna return it back to its original condition. So that's why I still have the um, original wires hanging out of this bike, just in case I wanna remove these electronics, use them for something else and then just um, have this as like an everyday bike, but for now this thing is looking badass. And I'm so excited to get on this thing and ride it around. Now this bike isn't perfect, right? It's a little bit goofy because that rear wheel I think is a slightly larger diameter than the front, which is just not usually something that you want on a dirt bike style bike. Um, you always want the rear wheel to be both thicker and smaller than the front wheel. And as you can see, it is both bigger and thinner than the front wheel, which is gonna be interesting. And I think enough has been said. Let's go outside and see what this bike can do. All right, so we got this bike out in some sunlight. We're looking good. And I'm just about ready to get on this thing and absolutely shred the living daka out of this bike. Okay, so if there's one thing I'm noticing immediately, it's that we should probably replace these brakes. They're all right, but they are quite squeaky. Ooh, this thing hauls ass, oh my God. Definitely faster than any like 125cc pit bike. So uh, pretty happy with that. Very torquey off the line. Another thing is we still have the old pedals on this bike um, I didn't want to take them off yet because I don't know I just wasn't sure if I wanted to keep this as a permanent solution but so far I am really liking this bike wow this thing is really something I want to take it off-road a little yeah, it handles that pretty well the kickstand does shake around a lot so I'm gonna have to figure out how to uh, tie that in Handles that little off-road section pretty well. After all, this is a dirt bike frame, so. And one thing I, I was a little bit concerned about with uh, switching to a more dirt bike style frame was, is the center of gravity gonna be similar enough, right? But um, I've noticed that because I have this big old battery in the center, the center of gravity is, is right in the, sort of the middle to the lower end of this bike. Uh, again, making it super stable. Let's see. Okay, a little bit of... Oh man, I mean, this really turned out a lot better than I thought it would. Like, this thing is blowing my mind um, because I threw this thing together in one day. You know what I'm saying? Like from from stock, like normal e-bike that I guess has like a dirt bike frame to this thing, only took me one day. And I have reason to believe that anybody can do this project for themselves as long as they just had the right tools for it. If you look at the price of like a Suron X, which is like $5,000, you're cutting the price in half well, keeping that same performance, um, you know, same battery life, same geometry and everything, like it's a no brainer. Honestly, probably faster than the Suron X. Um, I could easily get this thing going over 50 miles per hour. So, uh, you know, put that into perspective. This thing is insane um, for an absolute bargain of a price. So uh, don't sleep, don't sleep on building yourself one. Anyways guys, I think that's going to be a wrap for this video. If you have any suggestions for what I should do with this bike, please leave those in the comments down below as that will help me for making future videos. And guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I have so many more awesome projects planned for the future of this channel. And you hitting that subscribe button, it might be a small little action, but it helps me out a lot. 
Growing on YouTube is really difficult, so just please hit that subscribe button. And I will promise to return with some more awesome videos like this. And I'll see you guys soon in the next one. Later.